Hi guys, Olive here, here today to do part two of my preparing for nonfiction November book haul. November is right around the corner, meaning that we are getting ready to start nonfiction November. In anticipation of the event, I have acquired a truckload of nonfiction books. So in case you find yourself in need of some ideas of what you would like to read for nonfiction November, allow me to provide some suggestions. The first part of this haul, which I will link down in the description box below in case you missed it, contained most of the natural history books that I have picked up recently, which has been a particular interest of mine. But in this part of the haul, I will be focusing mainly on the history books that I've acquired. The first book in this haul that I would like to show you is The Millionaire and the Mummies, Theodore Davis's Gilded Age in the Valley of the Kings by John M. Adams. This is a book about Theodore Davis, the most famous archeologist at the beginning of the 20th century and his six major discoveries in the Valley of the Kings. The next book I picked up is called Strapless, John Singer Sargent and the Fall of Madame X by Deborah Davis. This is the unbelievable true story of how a painting by John Singer Sargent of an 1880s it girl in Paris caused a tremendous scandal due to one of the straps of this woman's dress falling off her shoulder, which was then captured in the painting. The next two books I picked up are all about New Orleans, the first being Empire of Sin, a story of sex, jazz, murder, and the battle for modern New Orleans by Gary Christ. As the title suggests, this is all about the birth of modern New Orleans. New Orleans is at the tippy top of my list of places I want to travel to very soon. So of course, I can't wait to dive into this. And the other book I picked up about New Orleans is The French Quarter, An Informal History of the New Orleans Underworld by Herbert Asbury. This is a history of the underbelly of New Orleans. So we're talking street crime, prostitution, gambling. It definitely sounds juicy. Next up, I have two books about the history of the Victorian era. So these would be very good choices for anyone who wants to participate in Nonfiction November that just participated in Victober this month. The first of those two books is The Making of Victorian Values, Decency and Descent in Britain, 1789 to 1837 by Ben Wilson. This is about the historical events, both political and social, that shaped what we know to be Victorian values. And the second book I have on the Victorian era is a bit saucier than the first. That book is called Pleasure Bound, Victorian Sex Rebels and the New Eroticism by Deborah Lutz. This book is about a group of eccentric artists during the Victorian era who dared break with the propriety of the age to embrace taboo and produce art and literature that no one else dared produce at the time in the same scandalous vein as the previous book. The next book I picked up is called Sex with the Queen, 900 Years of Vile Kings, Vera Lovers and Passionate Politics by Eleanor Herman. Funnily enough, I read Eleanor Herman's book, Sex with Kings, for our very first nonfiction November back in 2015. This one, of course, will be similar, but is about queens instead. The next book I picked up is a biography called Georgiana, Duchess of Devonshire by Amanda Foreman. This is a biography of Lady Georgiana Spencer, the great, 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 great aunt of Princess Diana. She gained immediate celebrity in 1774 by marrying one of England's richest and most influential bachelors, William Cavendish, the fifth Duke of Devonshire. The next book I picked up is called Servants. This is basically real life Downton Abbey, where the lives of the servants weren't nearly as simple as how it appeared on screen. I bought this book at a used book sale, and what I found inside of it makes me believe that the person who owned this book also owned the next book that I'm going to show you. That book is Odessa, Genius and Death in a City of Dreams by Charles King. This book is obviously all about the city of Odessa, but what ties it to the previous book is these two postcards of landmarks in Odessa, which I found inside this book. It definitely makes me think that both of these books were donated by the same person to that book sale, and it is one of many reasons that I love used books so much. The next book I picked up is a very chunky biography on Andrew Carnegie by David Nassau. Andrew Carnegie was not only a titan of industry in the 20th century United States, but he is also a very historically important figurehead here in my city of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I, of course, would like to learn more about him. A good portion of the rest of the books I have to show you have to deal with Russia. Are you surprised? The first of those being King, Kaiser, Tsar, Three Royal Cousins Who Led the World to War by Catherine Clay. During World War I, three different cousins, leaders of three different countries, were at war with one another. George V of England, Wilhelm II of Germany, and Nicholas II of Russia. As you can imagine, this caused family drama as well as drama on the world stage. Also dealing with Tsar Nicholas II is The Last of the Tsars, Nicholas II and the Russian Revolution by Robert Service. I am super interested in getting started with this one considering Nicholas II is probably my favorite of all the Tsars. 
Also dealing with the Russian Revolution is Crime and Punishment in the Russian Revolution, Mob Justice and Police in Petrograd by Suyoshi Hasegawa. This is one of a slew of books on the Russian Revolution that Steve has very generously been sending my way. The next book on Russian history I have to show you is both gigantic and heavy, and that is Stalin, Waiting for Hitler, 1929 to 1941 by Stephen Kotkin. This is the next volume in Stephen Kotkin's massive biographies of Stalin, this one covering the five-year plans, the purges, and obviously the secret pact with Hitler. Also relating to Stalin is Anne Applebaum's next book, Red Famine, Stalin's War on Ukraine. This book talks about the less widely known act of genocide committed against Ukraine by Stalin between 1931 and 1933, where five million people were killed during a forced famine. The next depressing book I acquired on Russian history is The Day Will Pass Away, The Diary of a Gulag Prison Guard, 1935 to 1936 by Ivan Chishchakov. This is a memoir that provides insight into the Soviet prison camp system told from the eyes of a guard and how it somewhat served as a prison for him as well. The next book I acquired on Russian history is The Cold War, A World History by Odd Arne Westad. This is, of course, a history of the Cold War, which explains the rivalry between the U.S. and the USSR as more of an ideological difference than anything else. The penultimate book on Russian history I acquired is Autopsy for an Empire, The Seven Leaders Who Built the Soviet Regime by Dmitry Volkogonov. This book claims to tell the entire history of the failure of the Soviet experiment and covers each of the seven general secretaries. And the last book on Russian history that I acquired is one I've been trying to get my hands on for a very long time. That is called Vodka Politics. Alcohol, Autocracy, and the Secret History of the Russian State by Mark Lawrence Schrad. In this book, the author argues that the societal issue with alcoholism in Russia is tied to their history of authoritarian regimes. And the last two books I would like to show you in this haul both deal with feminism, the first of those being Everyday Sexism by Laura Bates. I've seen a lot of people discuss this book on BookTube. This book is the result of a project that Laura Bates started in 2012, where she asked women from all over the world to submit stories of times that they have experienced sexism in their everyday life. The response she got was overwhelming and formed this book. And the very last book in this haul is He's a Stud, She's a Slut, and 49 Other Double Standards Every Woman Should Know by Jessica Valenti. This book contains 50 double standards that women encounter every day and advice on how to confront them to the best of our abilities. So that was a portion of all the nonfiction that I have been picking up recently. I was hoping to be able to show off all the nonfiction books that I have acquired recently in this two-part haul, but alas, I've picked up more nonfiction since then. So as it turns out, there will be a third part of this haul during Nonfiction November itself. Yay. If you've read any of these books that I showed off in this haul, if you've heard of them, if you now want to read them, want to pick them up for Nonfiction November, please let me know down in the comment section below. You can also find me on a variety of different places on social media and the links to all of my profiles are linked in the description box below. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're planning on joining in with us for Nonfiction November and I will see you in the next video. Bye.